Hello, this is Tanya Chu. So in this video, I'm going to talk about unit and measurements, or this is also the first topic of KSS and physics or form four physics chapter one. Right, so let us start with our measurements first, shall we? So do you know why measurements are so important? Let me give you some examples of how, why, let me answer that question myself, why the measurements are so important to let you see the importance of the measurements. So let us get started now. So why measurements, right? Look at the picture, look at the picture. Do you recognize this person? Wow, he is quite popular. In fact, he is the fastest man on, here on earth. Oh my goodness. So his name is Usain Bolt. He is like a boat. He could finish, he could complete 100 meter in 9.58 seconds, not even 10 seconds. Oh my goodness. How, how, how does it, how did he make it, right? So if we don't have measurement, how do we measure the 100 meter? How do we measure the time taken by this person? in order for him, in order to denote him as the fastest man on earth, right? Can you see the importance of the measurements here? Or how do you know that you have climbed the highest mountain in the world, which is Mount Everest? And Mount Everest is about 8.9 kilometers. How do people know the height of the mountain is 8.9 kilometers without making any measurements, right? You can be guessing all the time, right? So can you see the importance of the measurements here? Or, wow, this is a fastest car. Oops, not fastest car, but fastest affordable car on earth. So this car is called Bugatti Veyron. So in fact, this car is the fastest car on, um, yeah, on earth. So the speed of the car is about 415 kilometer per hour. Can you guess that 415 kilometer is about 1115 meter per second. It also means that this car could travel 115 meter in one second. That is definitely a wow factor. If people do not make measurements, how do they know that how far this car could travel in a given time, right? So this car was asking you, can you handle me because I'm faster than you, right? So can you see the importance of the measurement, right? So, or how do you know how tall you get every month, every day? You could measure your height, right? How do you know how tall you get if you don't do measurements, right? Can you see the importance of the measurements here? Oh, I know measurements is very, very important. So in physics, we talk about physical quantity. Let us look at physical quantity, the quantities that we can make measurements. So physical quantity is the quantity that can be measured. Can be measured means quantity that can be measured by any apparatus that we have in the lab, like for example, meter roll. Meter roll is used to measure the height, the length, the distance. Measuring tape is used to measure a longer distance as compared to meter roll. Ammeter is used to measure the current. Voltmeter is used to measure the potential difference or the voltage. You see that? Yeah, so volt, uh, voltage, length, distance, these are called physical quantities because they can be measured by the apparatus. Or some quantities cannot be measured by the apparatus that we have in the lab. So we need to use some equations to do some calculation to calculate and to get a value for that quantity. That quantity is also called physical uh, quantity. Yes, true. Example, let me give you some example, like acceleration. Can't you think of uh, apparatus, an apparatus to measure acceleration? I will tell you the truth. There is no apparatus that we could use to measure the acceleration. So the acceleration must be calculated uh, from an equation, which is the change in velocity. I put this is a little triangle. It is called delta. The name of the symbol is called delta. It means change, change in the velocity per the time taken. Uh, this is an equation that we use to calculate acceleration. And acceleration, since it can be calculated 
by equation or formula. Therefore, it is also considered as physical quantity. And I'll tell you one thing, don't worry about the quantities that you are going to learn in physics. In fact, all of the quantities that you are going to learn in physics are physical quantity, right? So to make you understand better, let us do some examples here. So let us look at the first one, physical quantity. So tick the correct physical quantity. Distance, is distance a physical quantity? I would definitely say yes, because distance could be measured by using meter roll or, me okay, sorry, measuring tape. What about length? Length is just like the distance. It could be measured as well. Therefore, it is a physical quantity. And how do we measure length? What are the apparatus that we could use to measure the length? It, they are, you could use meter rule or you could use measuring tape to measure the length. And what about volume? Hmm, volume, we have two types. First one, volume of irregular shape, ah, irregular shape. Irregular shape means the shape that is not fixed. Like for example, you look at my calculator, this is rectangular shape. So you know that this shape, you right away, you know that shape is called rectangular. And okay, a square shape, you know that square shape, you can use the calculator to calculate the volume of a square, cube, cuboid, right? So volume can be calculated as well as can be measured. For irregular shape object or the volume of the liquid, they could be measured by using measuring cylinder. I'm going to talk about that in the later topic. Yes, volume is also considered as a measured uh, physical quantity because volume can be measured as well as be calculated. And what about area? Area, I don't think area can be measured by any of the apparatus, therefore, Area must be calculated. So you are familiar. You learn in math that area can be calculated from, uh, if you talk about the area of the rectangular, so just take the length times the width. Can you see that? We are using this formula to calculate the area. So therefore, area is also considered as a physical quantity. What about angry? Look at my face. I'm so angry now. But how do you know how much anger that I have in me? Maybe I'm just having like a small little ang angry anger angle here. So, or I am very, very, very angry. But I don't show it, right? So if I don't show it, how do you know that I am angry, right? No apparatus that can be measured angriness. If I could measure the angriness, I would be, yeah? away from so many troubles from my parents. If I know that my parents are angry, of course, I'll be the first one to escape. Get away, right? But I don't know too bad. So angry is not a physical quantity because angry cannot be measured by any of the apparatus and cannot be calculated by any formula. So angry is definitely not a physical quantity. What about force? Force is a push or a pull. Can the push and the pull be measured? I would say yes. It could be measured by an apparatus called Newton spring balance. In fact, Sir Isaac Newton was a person who invented that force, invented, who came up with the force. So therefore, force can be measured. What is Newton spring balance then? Newton spring balance, if you, if you go to the lab, you can see a, 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 a rectangular shape thingy like this. And yeah, with the spring inside and two scale on the two sides, one is in Newton, the other one is in gram. So there's a hook there for you to hang the mass. Uh, that is called Newton spring balance, right? So therefore force is a physical quantity because force can be measured by Newton spring balance. Sad, I'm so sad, is sadness a physical quantity? I would say no, because some, people did to really show their sadness, but they are sad inside. Can you see that? So sadness is not a physical quantity because no apparatus that can detect sadness and no apparatus can measure the sadness, right? Like happy, wow, I'm so happy to see you. Is happiness a physical quantity? You know that I'm happy, but I didn't smile as much, but I am indeed happy. So happy is not a physical quantity because there is no apparatus that could measure happiness and there's no formula that can calculate the happiness. It is something in you.
right? Hotness. Wow. I think that BTS is so hot because I only know BTS. Some of my friends think that, wow, Blackpink is so hot. But I don't think Blackpink is as hot as BTS. Can't you see that? So different people will have different way to define their hotness. I think this person is hot, but doesn't mean that you think the same person is hot, right? So there is no specific way to measure that hotness. There is no apparatus to measure the hotness. There is no formula to measure the hotness as well. So therefore, hotness is not a physical quantity. What about temperature? You know, nowadays with the viruses around, when we go to any of the shops, right, to restaurant, you have to check your temperature. What is that called? That is called thermometer. So since you check your temperature with thermometer, so temperature is definitely a physical quantity because temperature can be measured by thermometer. You see that? Right? I hope it could clear some of your doubts here. So the important things about physics, that's a main difference between physics and math is that all the physical quantities must contain a magnitude. What do I mean by magnitude again? Magnitude means value, value 1, 1 1.5, 0 0.6, 11, okay, 11.7. Uh, uh, these are called magnitude. It's just a number and they are appropriate units. So some of the physical quantities have units and some of the physical quantities have no unit. So depending on their appropriate unit, like example, height of a person is 170 cm. Height is a physical quantity. Why? Because height can be measured by using a measuring uh, or measuring tape because this is over 100 cm. So you could use the measuring tape to measure the height of the person. 170, that is a number which is called magnitude. And cm is just the unit of the height. Can't you see that? So in physics, we are very particular about this magnitude and their appropriate units. Make sure that whenever you write your final answer, please put in the magnitude together with their appropriate units. If they have units, then you have to put in units, right? So physical quantity can be divided into two groups. What are the two groups? First one is called base quantity. The other one is called derived quantity. What is base quantity? Base quantity, or it is called the basic of all the quantity or the foundation of the quantity. So it is the quantity that cannot be derived by any of the quantities in the whole wide world. So we actually have seven base quantities all together, but only five base quantities required in your syllabus, which are, first one, length. Length cannot be derived by any of the physical quantities, right? So the unit of length could be in meter, could be in kilometer, could be in centimeter, could be in millimeter, depending on the apparatus that you use to measure your length. Mass, mass, the unit of mass is in terms of kilogram, could be in gram as well. And temperature, what is capital K? Capital K represents Kelvin. Lord Kelvin was a savior for the temperature. There's a story behind that, which I will explain when I talk about the thermal properties. Okay? So temperature, the unit is Kelvin, or it could be measured in degrees Celsius. Time, it could be, if you use stopwatch, then the time could be measured in second, or the time could be measured in minute, or the time could be measured in hours, okay, days, uh, years, months, etc. And electric current, capital A is a unit because it was named after a very famous scientist called Ampere. It could be measured in Ampere, could be measured in milliampere, microampere, etc. So these are all the base quantities that you have to memorize. And derived quantity. Derived quantity is actually the quantity that can be derived from base quantities through, I know you learn four uh, mathematical operations. What are the four mathematical operations? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But derived quantity can only be derived through multiplication or division or multiplication and division only, but not addition and subtraction. 
I will tell you why. So let's say, let's say I have a time one, which I measured to be 10 seconds and time two to be two seconds. So let's say I find a change in time, change in time. So change mean minus, right? Then minus two, I get eight seconds. Can you see that? I'll, all I want you to see is just the, the unit. Can you see the final unit of the change in time is in second? It is actually the same unit as time one and time two. So look at second. Wow, second is a unit of base quantity. It's the base unit. So therefore change in time is also considered as base quantity is never a derived quantity, right? Or if I find um, total time, total time, you just take 10 seconds plus two seconds, you get 12 seconds. Look at the final unit. Look at the final unit. The final unit is second. It's the same as a unit of time. And time is a base quantity. So nothing has changed. You see that? So therefore, total time is not considered as derived quantity. But if I do this time one times time two. Can you see that? 10 seconds times two seconds. I get 20 seconds squared. Wow, now the unit has changed from second to second square. Let us go back to my table here. Do you see any second square? You don't see any second square. So therefore, second square is considered as derived unit. And the multiplication of these two times is actually a derived quantity. See that, right? So let us try with one question. So is area a derived quantity? Hmm, area, I cannot use any apparatus to measure the area, but area can be calculated from the length times the width. That is a formula of area, right? So the length is measured in meter and the width is measured in meter too. Or you, if you love, centimeter you could just put centimeter it doesn't matter right so i got meter square wow meter square i don't think i see meter square in any of the base unit here do you see any meter square no we don't see any meter square so therefore since meter square is not in the base units so therefore area is a derived quantity see that so please take note again, addition and subtraction are not derived quantities. They cannot produce a derived quantity because the final units are the same as the initial units. Nothing has changed. So if you want to identify whether this is a derived quantity or this is a base quantity, all you need to check is the final unit, right? So, okay, now, do you know that, okay, the, can you please guess the mass of an ant? And yes, the mass of the tiny weeny ant. So you just imagine that if I were to guess, I would have to guess it as 0 0.00123456789100000. How many zero did I have to put in? How can I stop writing? Because I am wasting my pen ink. I am wasting my time. I am wasting my energy in writing. I'm wa wasting the paper. You see that? And or can you please make a lucky guess between okay the distance between Malaysia and UK? Oh no, do I really have to write that? It is like never ending. The distance is like so far, even if I use the flight, it is about 16 hours to reach UK. So I am getting real frustrated and real tired of it. Now I want you to imagine. Imagine the life of the scientists, right? So all these have been proven by research. So when the scientists did some researches, so when, let's say they want to research, okay, they want to calculate the mass of an atom. They want to calculate the mass of the earth, the mass of the sun. If they don't identify a way to save their time, they will be writing forever. It is like never ending. They will get very tired. So because of a very big mass and a very small mass, so the scientist has invented something to make our life easier. What is that? It is called prefixes. So prefixes is used to denote a very, very large number or a very, very small value in the multiple of 10. So these are all the prefixes required in your syllabus.
So let us go through it one by one. So let us look at abbreviation means the symbol of the prefix, right? So 10 to the power of 12, because it is in the multiple of 10. So 10 to the power of 12, that prefix is called Terra. So everyone wants to get the SSD, remember the data, okay? To store as much data as possible, which is in Terra. Wow, you heard about, wow, you have terabyte. Wow, that is superb. But do you know what is the power of Terra? Terra means 10 to the power of 12. And the symbol of Terra is capital T, right? 10 to the power of nine is called Giga. So Giga, the symbol is G, capital G. 10 to the power of six is called Mega, Mega Sales. 10 to the power of six, yeah, the symbol is capital M. 10 to the power of three is called Kilo, five kilogram, six kilogram. The abbreviation is small little k. 10 to the power of negative 2 is called centi. Uh, the symbol is small little c. 10 to the power of negative 3 is called milli. 10 small little m. 10 to the power of negative 6 is called micro. So this is a symbol, u with a tail, I call it. It looks like u with a tail. So this symbol is called mu. 10 to the power of negative nine is called nano, and the symbol is small little n. 10 to the power of negative 12 is called pico, small little p. So you have no choice but to memorize all these prefixes. Right, so that's the end of my presentation. A big thank you for your attention. So if you love this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye.